Hey, Dr. Julie. Good morning. How are you today? I'm good. Yeah, it's stinking hot today. It's a little warm. Little 95 degrees on the fourth day of September is muy caliente. That's good. Yeah. So, big question though for you this year coming into the fall here. You're a little stuffy lately. Well, there's been a lots of things happening in the weather. Mm-hmm. There has. And this week's episode is Allergies Among Us. Welcome back to the Prime Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Skip Weist, the Bowtie Chiropractor. And sans no bow tie today, it is stinking hot, so I rolled with the polo. Um, Got to have a little bit of the neck showing just so I can keep it cool. Because I don't, I don't like to get too sweaty, you know that. No comment. I don't like to sweat when I eat. That's a huge one. Then don't eat a lot of meat. Yeah, you don't eat a lot of meat. Don't eat outside when it's hot. I don't like that either. And today's episode is something that I think is really important for our moms and dads to know. Something that we get a lot of questions about this year with this time of year, especially with kids going back to school, is um, Dr. Skip, Dr. Julie, what is the difference between allergies and a cold? What is the difference between my kids being sick versus having allergies? Because we just spent the last two episodes talking about sickness, kids getting sick this time of year, rolling into cold and flu season possibly coming out with other garbage is coming at us with viruses. And one of the big things this time of year in the fall is allergies can show and ramp their heads back up, just like in the spring. And you deal with that a little bit. You've got a ragweed sensitivity. I never used to until I had our children. Yep, your gut changed. And that's a big thing because ragweed, grass pollen, those are big things that are out among us this time of year things that parents and, and tend to forget about. And it can ramp up and show major symptoms just like that of having a cold. Wouldn't you think? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So if we went into this and we dove into this just a little bit, I would love to hear your take as a mom as far as how do you differentiate the difference between our kids having a cold versus had them having an allergy? Oh, um, well, if you're sick, I think it comes on a little bit differently. Maybe you have a, a headache, tummy ache. Um, kids maybe fever, fever all over, and it just mm -hmm. kind of comes on. Whereas allergies, usually it's going to be more of scratchy throat, um, sneezing a lot, mm -hmm. runny nose, maybe drainage on the back of your throat. And I mean, you're not going to get the overall body aches and just like feel like crap. You're going to be more of a sneezy, itchy, watery eyes, nose, throat. Rash out a little bit. Yeah. I think one of the delineating factors, and it's kind of like the weathermen, like they'll say, is it sunny or raining outside and you should just step outside? It's the same thing with seasonal allergies. You step outside of your house and within 10 to 15 minutes, if you're sneezing, if you've got watery eyes, itchy face, you've got an allergy to something going on outside or you've got a, you've got a, um, you've got a hypersensitivity to the environment. Yeah. And it usually doesn't come with a fever, but it can. It can. I've yeah. seen allergies come with a fever. I've seen IgG responses and IgE responses. So IgG as in George, IgE as in Edward, two different allergic recept allergy receptors in the gut um, can mimic different responses from food sensitivities to environmental insensitivities to all sorts of stuff. But I think our parents really need to know the difference between spotting allergies versus a cold because here's the thing. Your kid goes to school with a sniffle and goes to school with the cough and the way people are become hypersensitive since 2020 to a cough, a sneeze or a fart, they get really nervous and they send your kids home right away. And there's a big difference between having an allergic response to an environmental stressor versus a stressor in the environment causing a viral infection, mm -hmm. which then causes sickness or a cold. And I always like preface that with like, if your child has symptoms of some sort, Mm -hmm. If you don't think that it's contagious, that it's the allergies, just let the teacher know. I think, yeah, let the teacher know. Make them very aware of it because everybody in the class is going to have sniffles. And this is where this time of year they will say, like, all the kids get sick coming back to school mm -hmm. because all of the schools are in session starting tomorrow. The Tuesday mm -hmm. after Labor Day, 
every school is in session now going forward. And this even is, our homeschool moms. Well, even the starting. whole homeschool moms are kicking it now next this week. And this is when the next two weeks we will see a definite trial on the immune system. But we also see a definite massive kick up in because it's been hot, it's been dry, we haven't had a lot of rain. Ragweed goes crazy this changing time of year. Changing of the seasons. Yep, changing of the seasons. Grass pollen goes nuts this time of year. This is why when you're out walking in your in your lawn, you will notice that your shoes get this this orange color to them. That's grass pollen. So these things can be very very uh, cause the body to be extremely hypersensitive to it. They they're a little bit of an irritant to our throats, our noses, and our lungs. What are some steps? We always see these really good steps in the spring, but what are some steps that moms can do and dads can do for their children right now, this time of year, to prep for allergies and get their body, get their little ones' bodies a little bit ahead of it? Oh, so, I mean, if we're, if we're thinking allergies, um, I always go to the super easy one is farmer's markets are still going on, but if oh, you're yeah. a local farmer, honey. Honey okay. is, a, is a really easy one to mm -hmm. be able to source. Um, but it's not going to the grocery store and finding just anything off of the off of the shelf. You need to find a, a local right? honey that's made mm -hmm. local to you. So mm -hmm. maybe like a 45, 30 miles at most radius um, of where that honey is sourced from because that's going to be the same pollen, the same yeah. things that the bees are eating mm -hmm. that once you start to get that into your system, it's going to lower any of those symptoms or the itchy sneezes those sorts of things that you may be suffering from heck yeah and i would have the kid take almost a tablespoon of honey a day oh yeah just yep. gotta start of honey gotta start getting the gut used to it because the allergy receptors that are causing the burning watering eyes the itchy throat the um the the stuffy noses are all coming from a hypersensitivity of the allergy receptors in your gut and what happens is when you ingest honey or take it in Provided you don't destroy it with super hot boiling water like that of tea, honey goes in and just starts exposing those receptors to the pollen that's in the environment, to all of the little things that float around because bees carry it all with them and produce honey. And it starts exposing you, micro exposing you to the environment, therefore decreasing the reaction. And I think that is something that is extremely easy to do. Honey tastes amazing and it comes in all different colors. I mean, honestly, it's going to be depending on the flowers and the pollen that the honey that the bee is being exposed to is going to change the color of the honey. You can have really, really dark brown honey that looks like really that looks like um, maple syrup. You can have really light honey right. like your hair. It's blonde mm -hmm. and it's beautiful like your hair. Um, but honey is extremely valuable for for a child. And I think another one too, just like we talked about last episode, is zinc. Mm -hmm. I think zinc is extremely, extremely important for your children, both one for cold and flu season to bolster that immune system and help them just have a really good immune response. But number two is zinc acts is very um it breaks down mucus just like vitamin C. So it keeps your mucus not so phlegmy, not so thick, it's easier to cough up. And let's think about an allergic response. When we have a, a house or something that we know is going to get broken into, and we've talked about this before, with the body's symptoms of allergies, it puts mucus everywhere, right? So when it starts getting overexposed, things start getting a little plugged up. What's one of the one things that we that I do sometimes in the mornings that is a little gross, but rinses out my sinuses really well? Well, a neti pot is always super good yeah, to have on, on hand. Yep. A little bit more difficult for, for kids, but there's yep. different avenues that we can do that. But well, there's rinses. A neti, yeah, a neti pot is, is super valuable as an adult. Looks a little silly when you do it. Like Make sure the mouth, you, you know, your mouth is open. Takes a little bit, you know, getting used to. Um, but we also have some saline drops that work really, yes. really well. Yes. And if you start incorporating that, doing that in the morning and the evening, that will clear up the sinuses as well and allow them to be able to drain. It works really even well for those people that are snoring. Yeah, it rinses everything out. It mm -hmm. gets all that garbage out of your turbinate. And it's disgusting what can mm -hmm. come out of your nose. Like I sit there and I'll do it sometimes and you'll see things come out both sides. And then be wary though. I want to I want to warn you one thing. Be wary because throughout the day then for the next hour to hour and a half, you may get a little dripper. And you never want that to fall on your patients or on any of the people around you. So keep it. But that, but that's super important, mm -hmm. right? Like that is that is our first line of defense is is our it nose. Is. That's what collects everything in the mouth. 
And that's good that it looks that way because that means that it's doing what it needs to be doing. Yeah, and, and getting those nose gut receptors all in check is a big one. Now, the other thing that I think parents can do at home to really help their kids out is if, if let's say the allergies are going crazy, you can get the kid on an antihistamine, but I would not recommend an over-the-counter medical and antihistamine because that's going to basically shut down the um, allergic receptors in the in the gut, the IgE and IgG. So we the don't immunoglobulin. Shut anything down. We don't want to shut anything down. We just want to stimulate other things that helps promote healthy immune responses and healthy allergy responses. So we have some products that we use in our office, but one of the big ones we use is Immuplex. We use Conjuplex. We use Natural Dehist. Allerplex. Echinacea Allerplex. works really, Echinacea really well. Echinacea works awesome. And Echinacea it comes that comes from the flower. Uh, it's wonderful. It's extremely bitter. Echinacea can basically burn your throat. It's pulled through with alcohol, but it works awesome. Um, but trying to get these allergy receptors better in the gut is the key. So when we're using an antihistamine for children, do you recommend that parents use it on a regular basis, basis or should it be an as-needed thing for our moms out there? Or should they be doing it to just build on each other more of a uh, like a vitamin type thing. If if we know that our, our children struggle this time of year and mm -hmm. it hasn't started yet, now is the perfect time to start to bolster that immune system. Just like it's back to school that we wanted to build up the immune system. Mm -hmm. And so getting that in the system to allow your child to better to adapt to the environment that they're in will allow those symptoms to maybe not even happen or to lower what those symptoms may be for your child. And then as the seasons start to change a little bit more and it gets colder, then that's where then we can, you know, that's not something that we have to do all the time. This is, we just need to build up the immune resistance to be able to allow them to get through the season of how long their allergies last. Exactly. And it decrease that sensitivity to the environment because your children and our children should be able to breathe the exact same air and not have allergy responses, not have asthma responses as well. But if we tied this back in, and let's let's talk about chiropractic a little bit because we're both chiropractors. Like this is what we specialize in. I know that the that the nerves in the lower back control the gut. They control the GI. I also know that the nerves between the shoulder blade on children and adults controls Jeez. the lungs and the stomach. And the ones right below the shoulder blades control the diaphragm. And then the ones in the base of the neck, those nerves also control the way that we use accessory muscles of inspiration. This is a huge thing to understand. But the communication to these systems and these organ systems are huge because it keeps the body from going into a state of hyper response. It keeps the body being able to adapt and compensate, more importantly, adapt to the environment, which is huge because your child should be able to handle the environment very, very well without having these massive allergy responses. And you've taken care of hundreds and hundreds of children. And what are some areas that you find the most responsive? to an allergy to an allergy well that's response. like this this time of year it's kind of like when we're when we're checking children and it's like oh you must have like extra runny noses mm -hmm. you've been coughing sneezing a little bit a lot more and that's where that thoracic region that that area the between the, the shoulder blades and if that's not usually something that you're checking on kids that's where it's going to be yeah their allergies have been you know a lot worse right now mm -hmm. and then you go and you check that area and it, it definitely correlates. And so correlate. making sure that you're assessing, you know, that, that area of the spine for those kids to make that adjustment, that specific adjustment to then allow the lungs to work and to filter exactly how they're supposed to, mm -hmm. to allow those allergies to not be as severe for that child. Yeah. And I think the same thing correlates to the low back and the gut. And we mm -hmm. see that as well when the gut's working too hard, or let's say the liver is working too hard, we're going to see these common subluxations, misalignments of the spine that are causing nerve irritation. But more importantly, it's going to change the way that those nerves communicate to the gut or communicate to the lungs. And that's not okay because it's going to change and it's going to add these symptoms. Mm -hmm. So all the time when we look at it and we look at the other side of healthcare, which just treats symptoms, symptoms-based care, it does nothing for the overall function of the body. It doesn't actually get the body back to communicating what it should. So if we, if we put children on histamine blockers, that actually block histamine through a chemical reaction, that changes the way the body responds to the environment. It actually isn't going to help the body respond better to it's the just environment. It's going to keep returning. Exactly. And it's going to come back it's worse. It's not going to fix the problem. And yes, it, it's exactly what happens is the allergies always come back worse. 
And what happens is if we look at the side effects of these things, and this is something that I find very important, is when I look at my list right here of side effects, all the time when we look at allergy meds that are given to children, it causes dry mouth, watery eyes, itchy throat. It causes plugging Wait, of the ears. But aren't causes it, headaches. Why am I taking that medication? Isn't that what I'm taking it for? Exactly. <laughs> and it, that's exactly what you're taking it for to try to stop. But those are the number one side effects. It's written right here. And when you look at that, and being a child that actually has suffered with allergies, a person that has had allergies since they were in their teens, I remember mowing my mom and dad's grass and sitting there with my eyes watering, my nose watering, and I would wear a bandana over my face to try to cut down on the dust exposure. And then I was being put on different medications to help decrease my allergy response. But I remember the worst thing that I ever had was nonstop dry mouth. And always sitting here trying to move my tongue, help my throat out. No matter what amount of water I drank, I always had dry mouth. And it didn't do any difference and actually led to me having more allergic responses as I got older to then to tree nuts and then to fruits that are on trees. I had apple, I had an apple allergy. I had an almond allergy. And it wasn't until I reached my early 20s and I rehabbed my gut right around when we had Brecken that I always had those issues, always had tremendous problems to the environment, always keeping around different medications that could help calm allergies down. But it didn't actually fix the problem. And it wasn't until I rehabbed my gut, wasn't until I fixed my liver stasis, my liver not working correctly. So we see this in children a lot too. We'll see massive rashes pop up on babies and young adults all the time. And it's because their immune system is hypersensitive. But what is it? What do we always say when a rash is on the skin? That's this, your skin is the biggest organ. So that we mm -hmm. we know something is working. Yep. And so we need to get that out of the system. Exactly. And if a rash That's is a already response. on the skin, it's already out of the it's system. It's already working its way out. So if we go and just treat the rash, we still don't fix anything. And that's something we need to really understand here, folks, moms and dads out there, is that if you treat the rash, so if we go into things and we're like, I want to fix the rash on the skin. Well, great. Okay. It stops the itchiness. It might calm the rash down. But what caused the rash in the first place? That's the key. What caused the allergic response in the first place? Why can people out there when I was in my teens be able to eat almonds and I couldn't and had to carry around a damn EpiPen? Why was that? And now I can eat almonds by the handful. I can eat, I can eat apples by the bushel and not have a single uh, an immune response. But what I also found too is that I was hypersensitive to the chemicals they were putting on a lot of these different foods and fruits. And that's the other thing too that we need to understand is that when we have food allergies or let's say that we have a pollen allergy, like we have a birch pollen allergy or a apple pollen allergy, they mimic and mirror each other, which is very close to grass pollen. And I know this is getting kind of sciencey, but guys, moms and dads out there, if your kid is suffering from allergies like to grass pollen or to, to ragweed, there's a good chance they're having responses negatively to apples inside their gut as well. They're having a, a negative response to tree nuts inside their gut as well. So we need to rehab that gut. We need to get that gut back. But more importantly, we need to get these kids adjusted so their bodies can start talking appropriately to the brain and so they can start decreasing those, those really hard compensations to the environment instead of adapting like they're supposed to. And another side effect that I find with these, with these drugs that we put children on is they can actually stunt growth. And that's not okay. They, actually, they can actually affect how teeth come in and affect the gums and affect how teeth grow. It causes a softening of the enamel, which is extremely vital to how the child can eat and chew. So that's not good. The other side of it is if we're starting to stunt growth, that means we're affecting we are tremendously affecting growth factor in the body, growth hormone, testosterone, progesterone, estrogen. Not it's a, a good thing. It's a thing. whole cascade. And it's just like when, when you take it, you think you're doing it to help one mm -hmm. thing, but it's affecting the entire the, the entire neurology of the body. It's the affecting entire everything. The entire system is just not working how it's supposed to. But here I think is another thing as a parent. A lot of this stuff, including this podcast, at times we get to get into a lot of information and I kind of geek out and get sciencey that can actually get extremely overwhelming to parents. So Dr. Julie, you being one of the <laughs> best moms I've ever met, um, what are just some simple steps coming away from this podcast that you would advise parents to just look at right away? Decrease sugar intake. Okay. 
see if we can figure out if symptoms are getting worse when we are outside. Okay. So we're going to increase hydration. Okay. Zinc is going to be a super easy one to start with, mm -hmm. as is honey. Um, but then just like we talked about some of the supplements that we have, primefamilycenters.sanerprocess.com, you can find Conjuplex on there. You can find Inuplex on there. You can find Allerplex on there. All of those things are easy, easy to be able to, if we need to crush those up for kids, if it's a capsule, if we need to open that up. But those are all super easy, simple things that we can do to incorporate into our systems. Um, but I find just with those, you know, two supplements, mm -hmm. adding in honey and hydration, extra rest, and then understanding is, that these allergies should be short-lived and probably through their system. And, and, and moved along. But that's yep. where, again, chiropractic is going to be that foundational um, supporting system to be able to allow all of these things to be able to be worked through the body Get that to make sure that everything is functioning exactly like it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. And I think that's perfect. And I think that's the easiest way for parents to start. And if you need more information, you can look us up at primefamilycenters.com. They can find all of our information there. You can go to uh, some of our stores that we have there with Standard Process. But more importantly, you can get an appointment scheduled to get your kids to come in and get their nerve system checked to make sure their body's communicating exactly how it should so they can fight this stuff properly, have an appropriate immune response when needed to help viruses, but also decrease the allergic reactions that are going on in their hypersensitivities in their body. And we see this all the time. And we absolutely love helping out everybody in our community. And I think as, as a mom, when we can be able to show that report mm -hmm. of how stressed our child's body is. We can show is, it directly. Like yep. that is, it's, we can have a starting picture to see like, oh my gosh, my child, you know, they haven't been just exaggerating. Like they, mm -hmm. they do feel like crap or mm -hmm. they are like overstressed and being able to have that print off to just kind of see, okay, this is where my child is. But then when we do our check-ins with our patients to see those changes and then to actually see like the, the color and the light, the vibrancy in their eyes and their skin changes mm -hmm. and hair, like all of these other things that we take for granted, when we can start to see those changes in our kids, that's what makes it really neat. That's the best. So all of you out there, just reach out to us if you need anything. Click that subscribe button below, click the bell, share this to all your friends and family, because again, this is a knowledge packed podcast for you and your families to get healthier and healthier. So go out there, everybody get it done. Take care. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye everyone.